tell me the weather in Frisco, Texas today? The current temperature in Frisco, Texas is a scorching 99 degrees Celsius. Make sure to stay hydrated and keep cool in that heat. Thank you. Can you also tell me the weather in New York today? In New York City, it's also extremely hot right now with a temperature of 99 degrees Celsius. Be sure to take precautions if you're heading out. Welcome back. In the previous video, we explored how to use the OpenAI real-time API to create an interactive voice assistant that can respond in real time. Today, we're going a step further by introducing Function Calling. So Function Calling allows our AI to not only respond to the user queries, but also perform specific tasks like calling APIs or executing external functions based on the conversation. In this video, we'll be combining real-time API with the function calling, enabling the assistant to handle real-world requests, such as fetching the weather for a specific location. Let's get started by walking through how to set up and integrate the function calling mm. with the real-time API. First, we need to update the session to include function calling capabilities. In the send FC session update method, we define a custom tool called getWeather. This function takes a single parameter, city, and is described in detail so, so that the AI knows exactly what to do when this function is needed. We specify the parameters using a JSON schema which defines the city as a required string. This ensures that the user provides a valid city name when they ask for the weather. Additionally, this structure allows the model to generate function calls with the correct input uh, format. Once this configuration is set, we send the session update to the server, preparing it to call the function when needed. Now let's move on to how we handle user input and uh, trigger the function call. Once the session is updated and the user asks a question, such as um, what's the weather in New York, the model generates a function call. This triggers the response that don't pre-call function can to call the arguments on the event, which includes the necessary arguments. In this case, it returns the city parameter. If we had defined other parameters, uh, such as date or time, we would extract those in the same way. Here, we extract the city value from the response and prepare it for the next step. We also retrieve the calide, which helps us track uh, which function call this response belongs to. Now that we have successfully extracted the city parameter from the function call, it's time to use that information in our local code. In this case, we are calling a function named getWeather. For now, this function is hard-coded to simulate retrieving weather data for a city. It returns the city's name along with a placeholder temperature. In a real-world application, this function could be replaced with an actual API call to fetch live weather data from a weather service or, or even query a database for other information. Uh, the function call generates a JSON result which contains both the cities and the temperature information. And this is then passed to the sender function call result method. And this method is crucial because it not only sends the, the result back to the server, but it also includes the call it. And the call it ensures that the server knows which function call the result belongs to, uh, allowing the AI to continue its response based on the function output. So after calling send function call result, uh, the AI will receive the weather data and use it to generate a, a response that will be played back to the user. Once the function result is processed by the AI, the assistant generates an audio response. This is received in chunks via the response audio.delta event. 
In our code, we handle these audio chunks and play them using Android's audio track API. This ensures that the user gets a smooth, real-time reply from the assistant. The audio is played incrementally as it's received, providing a responsive interaction without delay. We've now seen how to integrate function calling with the OpenAI real-time API. From fetching real-time weather data to executing more complex tasks, the possibilities are endless. In the future projects, you could expand this to control smart home devices, perform complex calculations, or even integrate with third-party services like calendars or e-commerce platforms. And that concludes our exploration of how to use the OpenAI real-time API with the function calling in a real-time voice assistant application. If you found this helpful, make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more tutorials on building interactive AI experiences.